All right. So we want to do introductions. I'll call them out based on my. I'll call them out based on uh, where I see people on screen. So, uh, Fred Barron. Fred Barron, select board. Uh, Tom. Tom Maher, finance committee. Uh, Bob. Bob Halla, Waitley Elementary School. Becky? Uh, Becky Jones, Board of Health. Paul? Paul Antea, Finance Committee. George Ann? George Ann Dufault, Water Department. And that's everybody. That's everybody. Yep. Okay. How come fire and police aren't here? Um, I think the point, I think I was supposed to represent the general, uh, okay. the other departments. Town government. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And I, one thing I want to mention j just at, at the outset before we, before we uh, get into sort of the, the project eligibility here is that these funds aren't limited to, while they can be, they're not limited to town of Waitley projects. Um, they can be, you know, there's, well, well it, it, they're not limited to town of Waitley sort of town infrastructure projects. Um, and we can sort of go through um, what those eligible categories are. But I also want to sort of talk about the process here um, because the funds are, so, so typically there's something called an award period or an expenditure period. And that's, um, the period that the town has to, to incur the obligations. Um, and in this case, it, it's quite lengthy. So the award period was March 3rd, 2021 through December 31st, 2024. So these funds, we have these funds for the next essentially, essentially three fiscal years. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind that if we don't spend them, if, if there's not a pressing need for $468,000 right now, then it's it's money that we can, you know, that can be carried, carried forward. Um, so that's that's pretty much what, what we have or, or the task before us. <coughs> um, I, I guess the next question is, how do we want to do it? Um, and I mean, Typically, what, what would happen is that if this were a typical project, you know, money available, um, I'm kind of going back to sort of how we do capital planning. Um, we sort of put out a project solicitation and say, what are the projects? Here's the eligibility criteria. Um, what are the projects that are out there? And let us know what those projects are by a certain deadline and people could, uh, departments and uh, people from other organizations in the community, if they can apply for an eligible activity, then we would ask that they do so by a certain deadline. Then we would review the projects, um, probably try to develop some type of criteria to prioritize them, and then make a recommendation to the select board. Brian, um, Brian, in very, very broad strokes, can you outline what projects would be eligible? Yep. Let me, let me share my screen for a second. Everybody can see that? Yep. So this uh, is the, the the treasury guidance that nobody really <coughs> wants to read in full, except probably me. Um, so public health is an expenditure category and all of these, all of these different categories, you know, one through 12 would be eligible expenditures. Um, two uh, is neg negative economic impact. So this is where I, I'm talking about it. It's not necessarily a town infrastructure project. Um, it could be household assistance to people to, to people that were negatively impacted by the pandemic, small business assistance, aid to nonprofits, aid to tourism, travel, and hospitality. Um, three is services to disproportionately impacted communities. Um, so it's things like education assistance, early learning, um, 
academic services, a lot of this seems to be focused on pre-K. Um, 3.10, housing support, and then things along those lines. Number four, premium pay. Uh, municipalities can adopt, uh, can adopt a program to give premium pay to public sector or private sector employees um, through grants to other employers um, if they so choose. Five is your traditional infrastructure projects that municipalities are, are most familiar with. And they're focused on clean water uh, drink and drinking water. Um, clean water, focusing a lot on wastewater mm -hmm. treatment and those types of things and drinking water. Um, and they can also be used for investments in broadband infrastructure. Uh, number six is revenue replacement. So municipalities can um, recover revenue that was lost. Um, and there's a formula that that calculates that. I haven't I haven't run that formula yet to see uh, if we, if the town actually lost revenue because it's based on on a hypothetical scenario as of so much growth each year. Um, so we'd have to see how that um, pans out. And then there's um, administrative expenses, which I think means that the town could hire somebody to um, hire somebody to run a program. And, or we can make subgrants to other units of government. So, for for example, for the CARES Act, we subgranted a, a portion of of our CARES Act money to Frontier, um, in proportion to the number of, of Waitley students that went there, because Frontier wasn't a direct recipient of um, of funds. And but I guess I'm going to ask Bob a question. Do you know if if Frontier was a direct recipient this time? Any idea? Not that, not that I know of. Okay. It, it's probably the case again. Um, and I, I guess that's a question for Darius as to whether, whether, you know, there are any needs at Frontier. I know there's needs, but yeah, um, yeah. what, I think, what he's thinking I think about. The most, I think when we were, I talked to him the other day, the most important thing is figure out what our, what our elementary school may need. Uh, we went through the capital list the other night during our uh, meeting on Tuesday afternoon at four. And we have things that are on hold because of supply, the supply chain and stuff, but we're on track for, you know, more rooms with, you know, taking the carpet out, putting tile in, stuff like that. But there's other things that we're working on too that are like priority number twos uh, on our list and stuff. Yeah. So, so that's a that's a, a summary of the projects that are available. Mm -hmm. And so, should, do do they need to somehow or other tie back to COVID response or future preparedness, or how tangential can that be? I, I mean, that's it, that's a good question. I think no. Well, yes and no, right? I, I think it's hard to tie back, let's say, a, a clean water project, right? Um, I think that's hard to, to tie that back to COVID. Um, but in terms of some of the economic impact, you know, if, if we're trying to address negative economic impacts on well, housing or something, then I think that there might be a tie there. But um, this is a little bit different CARES Act. So CARES Act was the the first legislation that came out that provided money that was really focused um, on, on the response to the pandemic. So they did require a, a, a closer connection. This one is a, a reinvestment and recovery uh, legislation. So, you know, it, it's, it has a big focus on uh, jumpstarting the economy or, or trying to you know, reinvigorate the economy. So, yeah. well, and from that, if I could just jump in, um, in thinking about this and looking at these categories um, and thinking about the town, um, it's my feeling that these monies are like lottery money. Um, it got dropped in our lap and it's, um, it's, it's, I don't know as we need, I don't know how comfortable I would be in allocating these monies towards programs 
that are already funded, that are fully funded, um, or that know that funding is coming down the road. Um, but, you know, that's just a general um, thought on my part. Um, I'd be more interested in looking at these monies um, going towards um, sections of our society that uh, have experienced shortfalls because of COVID-19 or have um, had to endure the greatest burden from COVID-19. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll be very specific. Um, I per, per, Personally, I don't think there's a group of individuals that have had to bear the burden of COVID-19 more than the children in our schools. Second to them would be the um, small businesses in our town, uh, specifically restaurants like um, the Waitley Inn or, and you can go on from there, but um, that I see as being um, an area that we should look to. Um, and there are others, and that's what this is all about and for discussion, but um, I, I thought I would put that on the table. I, I agree with Paul. One, relative to the total amount that there is a very small allocation, I would love to see some sort of bonus or something for the transfer station workers who work through this. Uh, again, it would not be a significant percentage of the money, but right. I think we owe them. Good point, Fred. Yeah, that's a nice idea of a, a gesture like that, a, a town-wide, you know, it's basically a town-wide gesture um, acknowledging the, you're right. Because they, they were always out there. You're, you're right. With masks and during the yeah, Wor worst periods of fear. Mm -hmm. They were out there. Yep. Um, I I would also I'll just throw this out very quickly. I don't know, in in this list of expenditures, um, I don't know how many residents of this town died. I do know one, and I. I, I, I would just put that on the table as well as if we want to, you know, e extend some kind of compensation to whomever um, their survivors are uh, in some way, shape or form. Good gesture. Yeah. You know, you're talking about the transfer, uh, the transfer to people there and stuff, but, you know, the teachers have been on the front lines along with those nice kids that we have and wearing masks and stuff. So it's, you know, if you're, if you're talking about town employees, I think they're all, anybody that's cooped up, um, you know, whether it's a school a transfer station or even, yeah. you know, the police, you know, mm -hmm. you know, the firemen, you know, it's, it's, you know, I totally agree. You, could, you know, you could, you could, you could take a chunk of the money and, take care of the, you know, a Christmas bonus for all the, all the employees of our town that have gone through COVID, you know. Frontline worker. Sure the, mm -hmm. that's a, that is, yeah, yeah, that's a really nice idea. Absolutely. I would like, hey Brian, um, are you looking, I, oh, go ahead. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Bob. No, the, the other thing is that, you know, like, like I was telling you, we were going through our capital list at the school and stuff. I mean, we, we can, we can give you guys the finance committee, the select board, Brian, you know, a list of our, our number twos that are coming up that, that we've been putting stuff on hold just to have it out there. If you're looking at stuff for the school at all, it's not saying that, you know, we can live without it if we have a place that really needs it more than, an item at the school. Like I said, some of the things are put on hold because 
we can't we can't get you know carpet materials and stuff like that at this time or or tiles uh, we're replacing some things in our kitchen you know our kitchen is getting really old we we finally got some money part of the money that we have there to replace one of the ovens in in the in the cafe in the uh kitchen there so we're doing the same thing at frontier you know there's it been well overdue to do some things there and we are doing it with our with our monies there you know at frontier along with that um i would have to speak to the educational shortfall that has occurred because of covid 19. we have children in this school who are a year behind maybe more we have kids at frontier who are trying i, I can tell you right right now so i i've talked to some of the instructors up there and they are behind the eight ball and they're behind the eight ball because instruction lacked during COVID-19. So if we were in fact to direct any aid toward any of the schools, I think it's, I think the bulk of that aid should go to directly to classroom instruction. And what are the teachers going to do? We don't hand them a check. We have them, they have to create some kind of a, a, a program and you can term it, um, you know, back to normal. You can talk uh, something that they know they can do to bring, to help relieve the shortfall that has been created by COVID-19 and um, and whether it's for them or it's for the students or it's for their instruction or the students' instruction, but um, I'm a firm believer that it has to go into programming because capital expenses will be taken care of. And programming these monies, we can put parameters on these monies to have them come up with a plan to use these monies to improve the educational outcomes of the kids in our schools. I'm, I'm wondering about a process question here because this is all very exciting spending money <laughs> and, um, uh, and a lot of awesome ideas, but I, I mean, I feel accountable, you know, I, 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 you know, we are however many people for the town and, um, um, I, I figure there's got to be a process for how we prioritize all these awesome ideas and um, make sure that, that things get represented and that we use the, it seems like so much money, but of course it's going to be gone like that um, right. wisely. So I'm, um, uh, I guess, what is our mission? And, you know, we have on the agenda what our mission is, and then we're going to need to have a process, obviously. And I'm guessing we're not going to decide tonight how we're going to spend the money. So, um, yeah, I guess I would love to know more what our job is here and um, and then like how we're going to decide on all of this. Yeah, so. So this is the way that the money is coming to us is it's, it's similar to any sort of grant that the town would receive. It, it doesn't require an additional town meeting appropriation. Um, so it, it's the expenditure of the funds at the, at the, at the essentially majority vote of the select board. Um, but the select board wanted to get input on how to spend these funds essentially. And that's, that's really the purpose of this committee. So the committee would make recommendations to the select board as to how those funds would be spent. Um, in terms of process, I mean, I, I see it as, and we can discuss what the process will be. I see it as, and I'm not really sure how else to go about it, but to, but to put out essentially a, um, a notice or a project solicitation that says, you know, the town of Waitley has these funds available, here are the eligible activities. Tell us what you want to do with them. Um, and you have, and I don't know if we do this twice a year. Um, and, you know, we, we develop some type of, you know, quick application form that, that, that gets us the details. And um, we would do that. I assume we would do that. If we all agree, we would do that 
you know, sooner rather than later. And then I don't know if we do it every year, um, if we do it every six months. I don't really know what the what the what the right you know what the right frequency of that is. I mean, I I think in in terms of trying to administer this, we don't want to. You know, I don't think everybody wants to meet two weeks and have projects sort of rolling like this. I don't think everybody has the time to do that. Um, I mean, that's how I was thinking that it would go and it would last for uh, the three years or until we until all the money's been, you know, been assigned to, to different programs or activities. Um, so I'm seeing, uh, you know, a project solicitation, maybe a 30 day deadline to get um an application back to the committee, we would review it. Um, we would want to talk about what the criteria would be in terms of how we prioritize projects, I think. And um, that's how I was seeing it take place, but it's it's totally up for discussion. Brian, I was thinking some sort of process similar to the complete streets, except with the select board being the decider rather than the state. DOT of a, a list of projects put in some sort of order with price tags attached, which the select board can then go through and say yes, no, yes, you know, partial, whatever. But to come back with a hard yet flexible list uh, of priorities. Mm -hmm. This may be an obvious question, but um, is there like is there benefit to matching it with other grants? You know, um, yeah, just um, like I can imagine, for instance, different departments or different entities coming together to create a project that um, that benefits the town in different ways, and or if that's happening, I can imagine them having different um, grants that they could also apply for that, that would be more additive. Is there any like any reason you can't do that? I'm just curious. Um, I, I don't see it. The only reason, so I don't think there's a reason. The only issue may arise is um, sometimes for the grant programs, it depends what type of funds they'll accept as local match. Um, so I'm not sure if they characterize these as mm -hmm federal funds or local funds. I, I'm not, I think that would be up to each grant program. Um, but in ter I think in terms of, and again, this is for the committee to decide in terms of prioritizing projects, maybe, maybe you look at, you know, how much, how much, how, uh, how much additional funds are leveraged or, you know, like if, if we can spend, you know, $30,000, but we leverage $60,000 then you know, that's, I think that's a, a pretty good investment. Yeah. So can Brian, I just maybe uh, can have uh, Hannah Davis in look at, you know, when she's sort of trolling for grants, just keep an eye out for grants that, that this might be leveraged. Yeah. 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 Um, Brian, um, you know, I, I, as we go through this, um, should we, try to be cognizant of what's coming down the pike in terms of funds. Um, we just signed a one billion dollar um, infrastructure and yep. it looks like they're going to try to drive through another um, bring back America or what, whatever they call it um, for another large sum and those monies will be coming our way. So I, I, I think we would, we would be wise and try to avoid spending these monies on projects that may be um, covered under those federal funds. Paul, yes, except my understanding is that the infrastructure bill that just passed does not have the kind of direct targeting that this does that the those funds may well go through the state rather than coming straight through to us, which means we may see less than we think we might. But the the poignant point, Fred, is that it will be coming to us. 
whatever. Well, that, that's my point. Is whatever we're the not, amount. When, when it goes through the state, you're never sure it actually gets trickles down. Well, I I, I just think that it, it would be. It, well, I, I, I it don't would disagree. It's something to keep to, in mind, but to know that I don't, I don't know that counting on those monies that have to be allocated by the state. You know, I don't, I don't know how much is going to find its way to the western part of the state. Luckily, we have time with this. That's that is yeah. kind of nice that yeah. we and maybe yeah. we need to. One of the things we'll want to think about is what kind of time frame we're thinking about for that first directed money. Um, since we have time, it'd be great to really give it some thought and, yeah. uh, you know, make sure to use it as wisely and yeah. as. Um, as universally beneficial and as effectively as possible. Agreed. Well, I think one area that we should look at first is if there's any compensation for local businesses that were hurt. For local what? That, that would, they would be hurting now. I'm sorry, Fred, I missed you on that. Could you repeat that? Essentially, Paul, I repeated your point from before. I think it's important that one of the first allocations be to try to give some compensation to local businesses that were hurt because they will still be hurting right yeah. now. Yeah, I, I agree yeah. with you on that one, yep. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong that some of the businesses did get money during the COVID relief. I'm not sure when they got it, but um, yeah, the people say like the lately in, they must like, yeah. They got um, something. <laughs> it looks awfully pretty. They got something. The Waitley, the, yeah, the Waitley and got something. I mean, not saying that they're not hurting, but they must have got some money from the federal government or the state government to, to well, do I their think, upgrades like other businesses right. did. I don't know how much the businesses were given directly rather than access to um, very low interest loans. Um, my guess is that's kind of what we're seeing. Um, because the way we had was a chunk were, of money, PPP loans were forgiven. I mean, you're able to um apply for them and um, and then you know, they yeah. became grants. Yeah. No, so, I know that for sure. Yeah, yeah, so which is great. Obviously, I'm I was very impressed by that, but yeah, yeah. I mean, it's Fred, I you're <clears throat> absolutely right. If people need that bridge, um, we should we should be um, checking out check uh, checking in with folks and you know obviously it's one of those fairness things we want to make sure that we're treating people fairly because this is a town wide chunk of money but um, but I think if people if there are businesses that are really struggling it would be good to know about that yeah, yeah and I, I wouldn't say you know a complete grant to cover whatever losses certainly some reasonable cap on. Mm -hmm. it. You know, I think what you said, Fred, what's what's really nice about that is, and I don't have a number here, but if you were a small business owner and you made it through COVID-19 mm -hmm. and then your town came back and recognized what you went through with a financial backing, to me, I mean, that's that's what towns are for. You know, and we do have a few businesses in our town. Yeah, we do. Yep. Yeah. And um, you know, I mean, I, I just you, you know, you just look at. I mean, I know John LaSalle's getting out, but you know, if it hadn't been for COVID nineteen, he may not have sold out. I mean, he may have held on and 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 kept going. He got he got killed. Um, you know, with um, all the weddings gone and, and, and all the, you know, er, er, everything that he relies on in a given year um, went away. And, um, and I was thinking of Quan Quant in the regard, you talked about the weddings. Right. Quan Quant's so entire did. schedule last year got wiped out. Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, so they're here, you know, they're here and they made it through and they're still going on, but you know, I, th I think it's, I think it would uh, be wise on our part to recognize that and try to try to kind of work that through. But um, 
Good idea. Um, so, Brian, how do you want to get your arms around this thing? I mean, so I think the first step is it, if we're agreeable to, um, you know, to the process I laid out before is we need to find out what the needs are. Yep. Right. We need to find out um, what the needs are for small businesses, what the needs are for the town, what the needs are for public health, um, what the needs are for uh, water, we don't have sewer water infrastructure, uh, stormwater infrastructure, you know, we really need to know what the needs are in the community. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know what ongoing public health needs are currently. Um, things aren't looking great right now um, in terms of trends, but um, it, yeah. I, I don't know how, it, I, I imagine COVID's not going away tomorrow. Um, I don't know if it's going away four years from now, but um, yeah. You know, there might be some ongoing needs there in terms of public health. Did you and all Brian, hear? And, that, uh, go ahead. I was going to say, um, I don't know if you've heard that white-tailed deer are carrying COVID. Really? Yep. I had two in my yard this morning. Oh my yeah, God. and I, I mean, I know it seems you're close so contact weird, now. There's oh. a lot of deer out there, so and I haven't heard yet anything about whether ticks will carry it or not. I don't, I doubt they know, but anyway, that's the kind of thing that we're, <laughs> we're going to be confronting. So yes, um, the public health folks, we've been talking a lot about it. We'll get back yeah. on it, but yeah, we got to definitely have to go through all this and prioritize. And yeah, well, I, I think that's why the committee was set up the way it was so that the school you know, Bob can go back to the schools and Becky, you can go back to the board of health and, and get the ideas from there and then bring them back mm -hmm. here again. But I also like the idea of basically pulling the town a bit and, you know, making yep. people feel like they're a part of the process because it's, it is a lot of money and, um, and uh, um, <coughs> I think we'll, we'll be able to get a lot of ideas. The, uh, I'm sure we will get a lot of ideas. I, I don't just, uh, anecdotally just i don't know if you've had a chance on hbo there's a movie out there right now starring michael keaton and and the name escapes me but he plays he plays the individual whose job it was to allocate monies to survivors of 9 9 11 and the guy's an attorney um he actually graduated from umass but it is a fascinating movie and what this, what these people went through to try to um, allocate these monies equitably to everybody out there. It, it was, uh, it's an interesting piece. Can I so say if something? you ask. Uh, one thing you need to remember is that there's only certain projects that are going to qualify for this. So you don't want to get, for sake of, you don't want to get a bunch of pipe dreams um, uh, for a wish list. You're going to have to be very specific to what you're going to accept. You're right, Tom. Yeah. Yep. Um, and I think if we obviously we have to stick to, um, uh, well, I think maybe we don't, but it's it appears as though we we need to stick to these seven categories um, that are that are listed in this uh, the Department of the Treasury piece, and um, and I think. You know, when we go through there, you know, maybe we should narrow down who we ask for. Um, Probably got to be careful doing needs. that. Well, you're going to just ask everybody? Well, that's how we dealt with the, um, the center school, is we put out a, um, a townwide um, questionnaire and look what it got us. <laughs> Yeah, it's for sale. <laughs> exactly. Um, I mean, I'm I'm kind of laughing about it, but um, uh, 
yeah, it's, I, I did, does it seem like we should be like, um, um, uh, going to our committees and, and talking about it and then reporting back with sort of our, the next step, how we approach it. And then also maybe um, collectively coming up with our lists. Maybe we could have a Google doc um, coming up with our lists of, of the sorts of, of entities that we can think of that um, we should be uh, communicating with. Yeah, I, I would rather cast too wide a net than too okay. narrow, and it it will be the job of this committee, primarily, to then triage those and you know toss out ones that simply can't be justified. You can yeah. always have a pipe dream column, right? And then we'll do, we'll look at the pipe dreams and we'll say that's actually a pretty good pipe dream. So you know, some pipe dreams are good. Sometimes. But I, do, doing that and getting a large list at first will also give us an idea of magnitude of first shot money out the door. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, um, so is everyone thinking that there's going to be a mass mailing to everybody in town about this? Well, I... Is, I it, it seems like the first thing is for us us to come up with that list of of the entities that we really think we should be communicating with or, or considering and see what that looks like. Um, uh, we could, if we're thinking about communicating with the town, we can always let them know what our process is. Because I think being, being um, um, open about the process would be a good idea, but it doesn't necessarily mean we have to ask everyone their opinions. Um, that's true. And, and, that's and true. that's what we decide now. But um, yeah. I think coming up with that list first and then deciding what it looks like in terms of how we um, let folks know what we're doing. Is that Fred, you know? Fred, Fred, would you like to comment on that? Because your comment was that you'd like to see it be broader than narrower. That you'd like to. Have I, I think I, I would say that Bank said is good as a start. Just to give us an idea of what the initial, you know, our initial uh, considerations should be. After that, if you know, we're looking at having spent, you know, fifty thousand of our four hundred and whatever thousand, then we can broaden it out. If we're looking at spending okay. three hundred twenty-five of it, okay, we don't. Okay, so, so could we begin the, that process right now? by looking at each of these seven categories and identifying within those categories where we would like at this point. And we can, obviously this can, this can change. This is, you know, this is a fluid process, um, but where we would kind of feel, and if between us, between all of us, we could say yay, nay, or advocate for a piece of, one of these line items. That's that's fine, but some of them don't don't uh, pertain to us. Well, that's true. So then, in that case, no one should advocate for it. <laughs> but if I, we get I to, to not, if I we get to this, sorry, I, I I just have, apologize. I was anticipating this was just going to be an hour call, and I have another Zoom call. So, and I feel like. Yeah, I know, I know, I'm so... You're, you're um, zooming out. I know. You zoomed in, now you're zooming out. Um, and I feel like this, it just, you know, deserves so much thought. And I, and Paul, I, I love that idea of like, you know, really being thorough about each of the, the line items because I feel like there can be some creativity in terms of um, what they're actually talking about. It seems like they're a bit over and open-ended. Like I think under um, public health, it says other. <laughs> yeah, right, so, right. so yeah. Um, and I, I've had, you know, I've been sort of thinking about, again, about ways that um, the different parts of town, like even within here, um, municipality plus school system, <laughs> um, maybe even plus water, like 
how those things could overlap, for instance, like how, you know, how we could use them, the funds in ways that work for different departments together or whatever you'd call them, sections. Yeah. Um, uh, so, so I feel like, um, I mean, I, I do better sort of like sitting with things and thinking. <laughs> Um, right. um, so yeah, and, yeah. I, and I think also that before this group gets into the individual categories, we should hear back from the subject matter people that Becky should come back from the Board of Health and say, here's what we're, you know, what we're we'd like to in see now. in health, <laughs> rather than this group saying that. So what if I put together a, a nothing <laughs> greater than like a, a two page project solicitation form and we do an internal solicitation first. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. I'd yeah. like that. Yeah. And then we'll meet in, I, I don't know. After don't Thanksgiving. Know. Definitely after Thanksgiving. <laughs> Definitely. No yeah. offense to any department heads, but I don't hear back that quick. <laughs> hey Brian, can you send out, can you send, can you send an email the the, the seven different categories, can you send that in an email to me? Yep. Unless you already have, but I don't see it yet. It's part of that. And the picture. other thing is, you know, it it, it's it, pages 31 and, and 32 yeah, it's, of, uh, the, very extensive. of that very long document. Yeah. There's a long document. Yep. The other thing, right. Yeah. Okay. The other thing is that, you know, the first thing we talked about is frontline employees of our town. You know, with Christmas coming up, maybe it's something that the select board looks at the frontline workers of our town and try to do something for uh, for Christmas with some of that money. You know, it's I'm not sure how many employees there are, you know, the frontline workers, like Rebecca said, but maybe it's maybe it's something that we should do, you know, for the holiday as a nice gesture. Yeah, I, I think that that would be a I would certainly feel good about that. Um, it's yeah. I guess it depends on how many there are, what that what the funds would look like. But some kind of gesture, and I hope right. you know, not not just a pen or a t-shirt, <laughs> but something. Uh, if we can do something, you're gonna, do you're gonna do it. Yeah, absolutely. Look, if you're gonna make it a pen, make it a bic. Okay. <laughs> okay. Do they still exist? Um, I thought I'd throw that out. Um. How so? Does Thursday work for everybody? Thursdays? Yeah. Generally, yes, for me. Yeah. Thursday Generally, for earlier the, um, would be meeting. better for me. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. A six o'clock would be like good. Like five thirty. Five thirty would be good. I could do that. Yeah, that's okay. Why, Tom? You're tonight? in bed by six. No, oh, I have to play cards on Thursday night. <laughs> oh my goodness. We'd save you from losing money. Uh, um, how does the ninth sound? The so, uh, December ninth. That Thursday. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Okay. Wow, that was so easy. Yep. <laughs> All right. Five that worked. Thirty. If Five I can 30. also throw out one other thing, if there's any other group that we think should be represented here yeah. based based on the list of criteria. Get back to Brian with it. We can always- That's a great idea, Fred. I, I just wanna make sure we get as broad a spectrum without getting the committee too big. Yeah, yeah. Um, should, should the Ag Commission be represented? I don't, you know, there's nothing particular in agriculture, but just as an example, we, yeah. we can Tom, also make sure the Tom project solicitation goes out to those committees. I don't know that they okay. necessarily need to be part of the committee, but we should make sure that the the internal project solicitation goes out to everybody. I think, right? Yep. Um, so I'm assuming that's that's what I'll do. I'll put together a project solicitation, pretty simple project solicitation form. I'll send that out to you know my group email list for the town. And I'll give them a deadline of December seventh or something. Um, to get back to us. How were you going to word that? Which Think part? Think about that. What? Which part? Well, the part that goes to 
anybody really. I mean, it, it, think about a town employee. How would you ask them what they felt these money should be? I, I don't know what the money should be used towards or did they incur a burden or a shortfall of some type during COVID-19? I, I, I just I just don't know how it is. Brian, it, why, it, why don't you yeah. send around a draft to us before you send it out? And well, weren't we going to do it internally first, Brian? Or weren't we going to do a, an internal um, look at the, at the thing before you sent it, Roder? Um, if you'd like to, sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I just thought that's what you said. Sorry, I wasn't. Yeah, when I he meant, said internal, he he meant within probably within the town offices or the oh, town right. itself. Within, town the, departments, within the town right. departments, not within the but I think, committee. But I think the wise thing would be to have send it out to this group and let us have a peek at it and be able to um, comment. So comments. So so nobody gets in trouble. Yep. Comments can only go directly to me. Okay. Because if comments are shared between the group, then it's a communication between a quorum of of the group, and that's a no-no. Gotcha. Don't want to get in trouble. Okay. Not over this. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. More fun things. That's, mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Um, all right. I have to go. It was awesome seeing everybody. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank right. you. See you, Rebecca. Have fun. Bye. 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 All right, so I'll send that around. I'll draft that up, send it around. Um, okay. If you could get comments back to me in a day or two, then I'll send it out. If I, by internal, right. I meant to all of the town departments, boards, committees, and then they can get back to us and we can see what we have for sort of the the um, town projects that we're looking to do. Okay. Good. Sounds good. Great. Good. Um, all right. Yeah. Thank you.